The NBR New Zealand Opera Company is lifting the curtain on its latest major production, The Bartered Bride. Smetton as opera is a romantic comedy with a mystery story that's finally unraveled with the arrival of a circus. So there's plenty of singing, dancing and action to engage the audience and challenge the cast. One of the featured artists in this new production of The Bartered Bride is the Australian soprano Taryn Feebig in the role of the dancer-comedian Esmeralda. Well, she's been here before as Eliza in a touring production of My Fair Lady and singing on the television show Dancing with Stars. But there's much more to the life of this principal artist with Opera Australia than that, as Selwyn Manning discovers. Uh, Taryn Feebig, and welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, you're playing Esmeralda in the NBR New Zealand Opera's uh, performance of The Bartered Bride. Um, and also understand that you began performing uh, like barbershop and musicals way back as a child. Uh, what, what led you into that transition from barbershop uh, to opera? Um, I suppose it was um, my partner at the time was a composer and he was involved in a lot of theatre. And so I was actually studying cello at the time and I was starting to be used as a, an acting musician. Um, so for instance, I did a play called Die of a Madman by Gogol and um, yeah and so people started to see that I could sing and play the cello and act and um, so I started to get more work doing that and then a friend of mine, uh, a director, said I should try out for this opera studio which was a two year um, course, intensive opera training. And what did you think when that suggestion was made? Oh, I didn't really think about opera at all, I, I thought it was beyond my reach, you mm. know it was something. In what way? Mm. Um, you know, it's an enormous art form. You know, you have to have a great command of the voice, you have to be a great actress, um, you have to have stagecraft, you have to be able to dance, you know, waltz. And so those things just sort of seemed out of reach to me. Mm. But actually all my disciplines that I trained in mm. from a child were all those things. Like you know, mu musicals, for example. Musicals, yeah. I'd done a lot of dancing, a lot of ballet as a child, you know, you know, did 14 years of ballet. So, and then had singing lessons and was a musician. I used to play in the pit as a cellist and, mm. you know, so there were moments where I'd be in the pit looking up thinking, actually, I'd rather be up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what, what was the attraction of being up there? Oh, I think just, you know, being able to play a character who isn't yourself um, and to really explore that and, you know, wear a costume and, you know, go on that fanciful ride. I mean, mm. it's amazing. If, you, if you're looking at barbershop, was that great training for a young singer to be able to, uh, uh, as a not, you know, obviously yeah. as a person who isn't a barbershop performer myself, yeah. um, is it a great training in being able to hold note? Um, yeah, I mean, you have to work as an ensemble, so that f straight up that's a great thing because, you know, when you're in an opera ensemble, um, you have to have great teamwork, you know. It's, it's the parts make the, the great team mm. without, if one part isn't, you know, mm up to standard then you notice and it's not such a great performance. So working in a barbershop um, means that you have to listen to others, you have to fit in together, you know, so there's a All that camaraderie there. Yeah. 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 And, and the musicals, what stands out as some of the favourites that you performed as a child? Oh, as a child, I mean, as a 15 year old, I was the MC in Cabaret and mm. I absolutely loved that. Yeah. That was amazing. And where was Firstly, that? Firstly, playing a, a man, you know, and having this fantastic sort yeah. of um, Piero face and um, that was at my high school, um, Churchland's Senior High School, which was a specialist West, music school. Western Australia. Western Australia, yeah. 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 So, yeah, that, I mean, I just lived and breathed that part. I absolutely loved it. So it's a natural progression uh, from, from those types of high school performances to university and the more formal academic study. Yeah. Well, what was that like? Actually, when I finished um, high school at this specialist high school, um, it was such a hot house, you know, it was mm. fantastic. It was a bit like Glee. Oh, yeah. And that, so it was going from that to a very um, academic with environment. Which some of the characters kind of come to life <laughs> when you're watching Glee. <laughs> Absolutely, and a few more. <laughs> um, but yeah, then I went to a very dry academic um, institution, uh, which was very theory based. But you know, I, w I was studying cello, so yeah. it was also a very lonely time because you spent up to eight hours a day practicing, which is on your mm. own, so. Mm. I didn't like it so much. And did you get to perform cello um, in orchestra? Yeah, yeah. I was performed in, you know, orchestral, um, s you know, symphonic orchestras and in the pit for musicals and um, opera and things like that. So uh, 
I loved that. And actually, I, was, I led the Australian Youth Orchestra yeah, as a cellist and came to New Zealand and mm. fell in love with it yeah. then. So it's wonderful to be back, mm. but not in the pit, on the stage. O on top, yeah. yeah. Um, let's look at that, that performer's world, because for, for all of, many of us, mm. um, many of the viewers, myself included, we don't really know what it's like, apart from, I think, when I was in year two of primary school and playing happy and, sl um, yeah. the, you know, and one of those kind of <laughs> things. Right. And we're remembering the roar of the crowd when yeah. obviously we fell over or something like that. But um, yeah. this year, for example, you sang Susanna and... Uh, yeah. and, and in The and, Marriage of Figaro. Yeah, in The Marriage of Figaro yeah. and others. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, yeah. What, what I'm looking at here is, um, you know, ha as a performer, particularly with opera, Mm. Um, do you have to specialise in a particular sub area of opera, um, or do you do you become able to perform many types of opera? I think these days you have to become a varied artist, and um, I'm fortunate in that I've been able to do that because um, I've done musical theatre. Of you know, did um, Eliza in My Fair Lady, yeah. and then I've done Susanna in The Marriage of Figaro and Parmina in The Magic Flute, and you know I'm doing The Wood Dove in um, yes. The Ring Cycle next year. So. It, all those things are very varied. Um, mm. It just means that you apply a different technique for the different music that you're singing. They demand different things. Yeah, um, what, 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 if you were looking at the variations, how would you kind of note them? Um, say if you're doing My Fair Lady, there's the inclusion of speech. So that's a totally different way to project your voice in a theatre. Mm. Uh, it's also then mic'd for, so you don't have to work so hard um, because you're doing eight shows a day week, uh, whereas if you're doing something like Wagner, you have to really huge orchestra, so mm. the voice is really working hard, it's like mm. doing a marathon. Wow, over yeah. the top, so you can be heard. Yeah, that's right, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as a performer also, um, do you, do you um, kind of work on um, that perf perfect performance? Is that something that is uh, possible? That's, that's like you know? the perfect wave, isn't it, for a surfer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. out there looking for it all the time. Uh, Look, does perfection exist? I'm not sure, but I mean, every performance you're thinking, you know, must watch out there, you know, attention to detail here, yeah. and so perfect performance. Of course, you strive for it whenever yeah. you reach it, because the problem is, once you think that well, that's it, the bar goes up. Yes. And so you, you know. either with yourself, with the challenge, or others. That's right. Yeah. Um. So if you were looking at Esmeralda and mm. the Bartered Bride, mm. um, what kind of things are you kind of working on at the moment? Thinking this is what <laughs> I want to nail. <laughs> I want to show this uh, this audience here in New yeah. Zealand. Uh, well, it, two things really. I suppose one for the audience, but one for myself. The main thing is that I'm on point, again for the first time in 25 years. So can, can you explain that? <laughs> well, it's, uh, you know, ballet shoes, you yes. know, you're on blocks of wood. It's, I liken it to being a boulder on top of toothpicks. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're supporting your weight on these two points that are, you know, your big toes. So that's been a fantastic challenge and I've been going back to um, ballet class, which I've loved. So that's ignited my love of dance again. Uh, so that's a a great challenge and also working with the circus performers you know I'm standing on a circus performer Jeff's shoulders I mean if someone said that to me you know, last year I thought yeah right sure <laughs> but I am so, so with, with the character mm. uh, <coughs> can you tell us a bit about the bartered bride and, and Esmeralda and what's going on yeah, with the story? Esmeralda comes into the um, opera in act three with a traveling circus and we're um, we are the light entertainment that comes into to town, but we're fairly um, jaded. You know, we're, we work pretty hard and we're sort of rolled out. And mm. Anyway, Esmeralda, basically in every town she goes to, falls in love with someone a, and she spots um, Vashek. So that's a backstory, is it? We're, yeah, you know, pretty, it's our backstory. Of, yeah. yeah, I mean, when you meet us, we're, you know, we're asleep in the yeah. caravan and, and then we come to life and we do, our, you know, we do what we need to do for our circus master who's our tyrant. And uh, anyway, so Vashek has come to watch a rehearsal and he's this sort of blumbering, stuttering man who's been um, betrothed to Majenka, who's not in love with him. Um, she's in love with his half-brother called Yenik. And yenik has been, you know, banished to another part of, the, um, of Czechoslovakia where it's set. And anyway, Vashek is delighted that someone loves him. But anyway, in, in our rendition, um, she sees him, wants to marry him immediately, love at first sight. And then 
the political heavies come and cut Esmeralda away and she's chucked into prison. Mm -hmm. So that's never fulfilled ah. for Vashik. And that's... It's, a bit of a sad ending it's for It's a Esmeralda. sad ending. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, with the New Zealand audiences, yeah. um, does every country have a different type of audience? And if so, what, what's the New Zealand audience like? Um, from my experience, very friendly. Yeah. Yeah, very friendly. Um, very open. Oh. And in general, not just audiences, but people in the street. That's what I noticed. People okay. have time for people, yeah. which is lovely. And it'd be similar to Australia in that respect, would it? Yeah. I think we're a little bit more rushed for time, though. Ah. Yeah, so I really enjoy that sort of, you know, I feel like people breathe here. Yeah, ah, well, that's yeah. a nice way of putting it. Yeah. Um, and so here, it's um, the, the Bar to Bride begins on Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and how can viewers uh, find tickets? Um, and what, what's the uh, performance span and time? And we have four performances starting the 22nd, uh, 25th, 27th, 29th. This is in Auckland? In yes. Auckland, and then we go to Wellington. Um, and you can buy tickets at the edge yes. um, online or at, you know. Yeah, so just put in Barter Bride tickets, yeah. um, it will come up the, yep. um, with the edge. And, and uh, it's at the ASB Theatre, yes. uh, and that's at uh, the Altair Centre in the centre of Auckland City, and then it's off to Wellington. But if you're looking at the acoustics, perhaps, at the Altair Centre, how, how does that shape up the ASB theatre for, for a performer, for opera? Actually, I've been sort of warned that it was incredibly dry, oh. but they've um, just renovated um, the downstairs area and put taken the carpet out and put mm. all wood and then wood panelling up the sides of the theatre. So I actually think it's fantastic. So you've, um, pr um, you've rehearsed in there? Well, yes, we've yeah. been rehearsing there this yeah. week, so yeah. um, I'm very pleasantly surprised. Yes, um, and with the, um, the, the, uh, the characters and things like that, what, to y what is one of the biggest kind of moments in the performance um, from your point of view that some of the, the viewers out there should kind of wait for? Well, one, the singing across the board is superb from every cast member, so they'll be delighted from beginning to end. But my scene, because <laughs> I'm an egomaniac, no, my scene is so vibrant because it's the circus. I'm with eight circus performers who are utterly amazing. Yeah. Um, that must be pretty hard in, in the midst of a circus performance, yeah. uh, on point, yeah. as you described. Yeah. Uh, so you, everybody will have to be sitting there thinking, come on, Tara. <laughs> will she make <laughs> just, it? Just hang on there. Yeah, no, no, I feel confident about it now. I must admit, the first day of rehearsal, I went, oh no, what have I got myself in for? But yeah, it's, um, it's a jewel in the, you know, within the opera. Yeah. Taryn Feeberg, thank you very much. Pleasure. So was Manning with Taryn Feeberg, and that's all for now. We're back same time next week with more guests on The Beats and Interview. Till then, thanks for your company, and see you soon. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.